All right, this is intermediate algebra section 2.4, and this is part B. Um, starts on page 86 of your book. We're going to work on the word problems here for substitution. And uh, mind you, in my class, I give students the option of uh, which method they would like to use on the word problems, uh, either elimination or substitution, but some word problems just lend themselves better to substitution than elimination. However, in my class, you do get the option of whether you would rather use substitution or elimination. So let's look at number six. The sum of two numbers is 33. One number is five more than three times the other number. What are the two numbers? All right, the trick here is setting up your equations correctly. And uh, you can use x and y for the two numbers. It doesn't matter. Uh, but you're going to read this. The sum of two numbers is 33. Well, sum means the numbers are being added. So one number plus another number equals 33. That's the sum of two numbers. Those two numbers are different, so we are using different variables. Then it says one number is, all right, one number, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, I'm gonna, gonna choose X for the one number that they mentioned first. Is, the word is, is a clue for equals. So one number is, Five more than means five is getting added to something. So that's five plus three times means we're going to multiply times three, the other number. Well, this was one number. The other number is y. So three times the other number would be three times y or three y. Now, if you're looking in your book here, you can see your author wrote this as x plus x equals three y plus five. 5 plus 3y is exactly the same thing as 3y plus 5. Uh, addition is commutative. It doesn't matter which order you write it in. If it was subtraction, yes, it would matter because 5 minus 3y is not the same as 3y minus 5. But it's not subtraction, it's addition. So here's your two equations. This is already set up for substitution. If you notice, this x is already isolated. So this is really easy to use substitution on when you already have a variable isolated. You're just going to substitute this in the other equation instead of x. All right, so let's pull that equation down here. Maybe we've got a little bit of white space here. Yeah, we've got x plus y equals 33. We're going to put this value, this expression that's equal to x in here instead of x. So we'll have 5 plus 3y plus another y equals 3. Now, if you got confused there, x is equal to 5 plus 3y. So that's this right here is your x. And then this y is still here. And of course, it was equal to 3. So now we're just going to combine like terms. So we have 5 plus 4y equals 3. The 5 is going to need to go to the other side to combine with the 3. So 4y equals, uh, that would be 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. And then we're going to divide by 4. And we get y equals negative 1 half. And again, I can see that I made a mistake, just like on the last example. Maybe I'm trying to go too fast. This should be 33, not 3. So we're going to make this into 33 here. And 33 minus 5 is not negative 2. It's 32. And 32 divided by 4 is 8. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So one of the numbers is 8. Again. Okay. So I made another mistake. 33 minus 5 is not 32. It's 28. And 28 divided by 4 is 7. So y equals 7. All right. So a y equals 7 is one of the numbers. Now we need to find the other number, which is x. This would be the easy equation to go back to. So let's pull it down here. 
x equals 5 plus 3y. If y equals 7, then we're going to put a 7 in there. So x equals 5 plus 3 times 7, or 5 plus 21, which is 26. So in a complete sentence, the two numbers are 26 and 7. Okay, on to example 7 here. Uh, this is on page 86. So we're going to read this and see if we can write some equations. It takes eight hours for Mitchell and Blake to paint a few rooms in building four of the Osceola campus. Mitchell, let's see, it should say, it, if it takes Mitchell two hours more than Blake to paint the rooms, how many hours does it take each one to paint the rooms? All right, so the two equations I'm going to use are M and B for Mitchell and Blake. If it takes eight hours for Mitchell and Blake to paint a few rooms, that means that if I add these together, it will be equal to 8. So that's your first equation. If it takes Mitchell two hours more than Blake to paint the room, so we need to write that into an equation. It takes Mitchell two hours more than Blake. So if I add 2 to Blake's time, it will equal Mitchell's time. So this is already set up for substitution. The m is isolated, so we can substitute that into the first equation instead of m. So we're going to start with this equation, m plus b equals 8. If m is equal to b plus 2, I can put that here. So b plus 2 plus another b equals 8. So this m was equal to b plus 2, so this m changed into b plus 2, and then this b is still there, equals 8. Uh, combine like terms, we have 2b here, plus 2 equals 8, subtract the 2, subtract the 2 from both sides, you have 2b equals 6, divide by 2, equals 3. So it looks like Blake's time is 3. Uh, we still need to find Mitchell's time, so I'm going to go back to this equation, m equals b plus 2, and I'm going to write it here, and then I'm going to take the fact that I know that b equals 3, and I'm going to put it right here, m equals 3 plus 2, which means m equals 5 in a complete sentence. How long did it take each one to paint the rooms? So in a complete sentence, it took Mitchell five hours and Blake three hours to paint the rooms. And there's your solution in a complete sentence. All right, example eight is on page 87. It says, the amount of $15,000 is invested in two funds paying 2% and 5% simple interest. So one of the funds pays 2% and the other one pays 5%. If the annual interest is 540, how much of the 15,000 is invested at each interest rate? So, um, you can use x and y if you like. You can designate x to be the 2% and y to be the 5% interest rate. It doesn't matter. You can use a and b. You can use you know any letters you like. I'm um, going to use x and y. kind of goes along with what your book is doing here. All right. So we have 15,000 when we start. We separate it into two different funds. Some of it goes in 2%. Some of it goes in 5%. But it still is only $15,000. So the first equation is my two amounts equal $15,000. That's your first equation. The second equation has to do with the interest. All right, so some of it was invested at 
some of it invested at 5%, the interest is 1500 I'm, I'm sorry, 540 So this amount times 2%, so it will be 0 0.02, that's 2%, times x, plus the 5%, 0 0.05 times y, so the basic of that, the, the premise is that when you multiply the percent rate times the amount you invest, you get the interest. So this is the percent rate as a decimal times how much I invested. The percent rate times how much I invested, which I don't know. That's exactly what I don't know, how much was invested. Um, and that will equal the total amount of interest, which is 540. So now we have our two equations not really set up for substitution because I don't have an isolated variable. But this top equation right here, this would be really easy for us to isolate one of the variables. I'm actually going to isolate y here uh, only because uh, that's what is looking like in your textbook. So I'm actually going to scroll up here to the bottom of the page and rewrite my equations because I have lots of white space here. My two equations were x plus y equals 15,000 and then 0.02x plus 0.05y equals 540. I'm going to take this top equation, I'm going to isolate y. So x plus y equals 15,000. To isolate y, the x term just going to the other side. So y equals 15,000 minus x. Or you could write negative x plus 15,000, but I kind of wanted to not put that negative at the front. Now, since this is substitution, we're going to take this expression that's equal to y and put it in the other equation. So it needs to go in there. So we're going to pull that equation down now. 0.02x plus 0.05y equals 540. And we're going to put this in here for y because it's equal to y. 0.02x plus 0.05 times 15,000 minus x equals 540. Now it's just a matter of simplifying and solving, and I know these decimals are n not real easy to look at, but you can use a calculator for this. 0.02x plus 0.05 times 15,000 comes out to be 750. So this would be plus 750. And then you have 0 0.05 times negative 1x makes negative 0.05x. It's just a matter of writing things down and being careful. I'm scroll up again, please. All right. Um, Your like terms are here, all right, and here. So I'm going to, first of all, put this negative 750 over here, all right, and then I can combine these, and this is also going to be a negative here, all right. Um, so this turns into negative 0.03x equals negative 210. That's what these turn out to be when you add them, 210, negative. Then you divide, divide off this negative 0 0.03, divide by 0 0.03, and you get x equals 7,000. You guys can check that with the calculator. So what does it mean? Uh, what was x? If we scroll all the way back up, what was x? 
X was the amount that we invested at 2%. So that's what X is. You can see that way up here. X was the amount we invested at 2%. So if we invested 7,000 at 2%, how much did we invest at 5%? Um, and that would be Y, wouldn't it? Well, right here, we have a statement that y equals 15,000 minus x. So that's what we're going to pull down here to find y. Um, I'm going to identify this first off as the amount invested at 2%, so I don't forget what that was. And then I'm going to uh, pull down this equation for y and figure out how much we invested at 5%. So let's see. Do I have enough space to do this? y equals 15,000 minus x, or 15,000 minus 7,000, y equals 8,000. So that's the amount invested at 5%. And of course, we're going to uh, write this as a complete sentence. So let's see. $7,000 were invested at 2% and $8,000 were invested at 5%. All right, that's it for substitution. Uh, bring your questions with you to class. I'll see you then.